This is the age old question. Is Webflow finally better than WordPress? Now, both of these options are great. Now, if you're a designer and you wanna create a website, both of these options are obviously great, but which option is best? Well, let's get into it. Now, if you're watching this, odds are that you've probably tried one or the other and you wanna see which is the better alternative, right? Should I stick with WordPress? Should I stick with Webflow? And is there any benefit to using the other one? Now let's get started with the WordPress benefits. Now, WordPress is one of the most commonly used website builders in the world. It's one of the most famous and the most commonly used. So it does have a lot of benefits. For one, it's free to use. You only need to pay for hosting. So it's very, very affordable if you wanna get started in website making and if you're building websites for clients. WordPress's backend is completely customizable. So it gives you complete control of your backend and all of your data. There are thousands of plugins and extensions to choose from. There's so many that you can't even count them all and they're all compatible with WordPress and their system. Now, WordPress is very, very easy to use for any beginner and it's super easy to start up a website within an hour to two hours if you know what you're doing and if you know how to set up a template very easily. And of course, due to WordPress's popularity, there's so many templates and themes out there that you can just download or buy and you have a website running up in a couple of hours. WordPress lets you create SEO optimized websites. It's mobile friendly and it also is a great option if you want your website to rank well on Google. Now lastly, WordPress has a huge marketplace for plugins for themes. There's external marketplaces as well and there's just a huge community around the WordPress world and all of its templates and builders and things like that. Now these pros aren't necessarily exclusive to WordPress. In fact, Webflow actually can do a lot of these benefits and these are just some of the benefits as well. Webflow gives you the benefit to create completely customizable websites without using absolutely any code whatsoever. The drag and drop builder lets you completely customize your web page and obviously WordPress has Elementor but it, you can't really compare the two because Elementor is just a plugin that helps you build your website and then Webflow is kind of the whole system that Elementor is trying to be right so you can't really compare the two one is a plugin and one is an entire system and program and a whole community around it right you can easily create any animation you want any interaction they're super super easy to create and you can't really do it that well on WordPress now Webflow websites are also really SEO friendly and if you want to check out how to do more SEO for your Webflow websites then I recommend that you check out my brother's channel because he just created a new SEO channel which can help you as a beginner now with Webflow you can make edits that you can see exactly how they're gonna appear on page which you can't really do on WordPress you can invite editors and collaborators to kind of review the work that you've done on Webflow and this is super super important and we'll get into it later on in the video. If you work with developers you can also export code for them and it's super clean code as well. And lastly there's also a massive gallery of templates that you can use for your blogs, for your CMS pages, for your portfolio, anything you can obviously build on Webflow right and there's a huge huge marketplace as well. Obviously not as big as WordPress is but it's still really really big. So if you're a beginner and all you want to do is just ship a quick website then no doubt just use WordPress right because there is a learning curve when it comes to learning Webflow and it is kind of hard in the beginning. But if you don't care about fancy designs and fancy interactions and all you want is a really cookie cutter website, then I recommend that you go with WordPress. And there's no shame in that, right? Because sometimes speed is the name of the game and that's what you want to get out fast and go out and build the future. But let's say you're a little bit more than just a beginner. Say that you're someone like me, right? You're a freelancer, you're a designer, and you want to give websites to clients that have immaculate control and precision over the design of the website. Well, what choice would I pick, right? Like what choice would I necessarily use? For me, designing is about control. If I don't have full control of my website and I don't actually know what it's going to look like when it goes live and when I'm handing it off to my clients, then that's a big, big problem. When I'm in WordPress, the one thing I don't have with my design is control, right? I don't really have that control. And I know people might say Elementor gives you that control and you can kind of use the margins and paddings like you do in Webflow, but it's not really the same, right? It's not the exact same experience and it's, it's hard to kind of replicate that exact experience. Now, earlier I said that the editor in Webflow is one of the most important things of this comparison, right? And one of the reasons is imagine you're a freelance designer like myself and you're always creating websites for clients, for founders, and say that there's an issue, right? There's a sentence that they need to change, there's an image, there's a color, whatever. The last thing you wanna do is tell your client that they need to go into the back end to change this thing and this animation and they can't really do it so they need to hire you again or they need to book you for more hours or whatever it is. That's not really the experience that you wanna give them. And what the Webflow editor allows you to do is give them the control from a sort of dashboard point of view and they can just change the sentence, the color, the images, anything in CMS as well. It's just all there for them to use. By the way guys, if you want to check out Webflow, make sure that you use the link in the description because it will help out the channel. But Webflow isn't everything. There's a lot of cases where I wouldn't use Webflow to make a website. One example here is, let's say that I have a huge e-commerce, right? And I have a lot of products and I have thousands and thousands of products. The last thing I would do is want to have that be on a Webflow site. And maybe WordPress can then come in here and help us out. But I'd never have a massive e-commerce on a Webflow site. Maybe I have a little boutique e-commerce, like maybe 10, 20, 30 products, something like that.
everything like that, that'd be completely fine. Another thing I would never do is have a massive blog on Webflow that just wouldn't really work with all the CMS items. So Webflow is best when you're creating a marketing page or a couple pages, maybe like 10 to 50 pages, that's fine. But you don't wanna use it for thousands of CMS items and thousands of blog pages, right? Also, one of the limitations is you can't really do login sign up. You can with something called member stack and I know Webflow was trying a beta, but it's not really the point of it just yet. Right now, it's just for really, really custom and really great landing pages and marketing pages. And here are some examples of some really great Webflow sites that I would use and I would recommend, right? You've got a lot of templates here and these are all great examples. You got some free ones, some popular ones, categories, you got CMS and then also e-commerce. So let's check out one of these examples here, right? For example, let's check out this Mexicana restaurant one. So if we can see it here, we've got this really custom website for this restaurant and you would never really be able to achieve this with WordPress, right? You've got this entire experience that you want to give to your customers and that's just not something that you would be able to really do with the exact precision that you have here. Another really great example here that we can see for Webflow is this bank Satoshi bank template website, right? We've got this input here that you can easily do with a form. We've got this split here. We've got all the, the logo clouds. And again, this is a super, super simple website. And this is just a template that you can buy right now. And you could do this with Elementor, but again, it's, it's all about control, right? You don't really have that exact pixel precision that you want when you're designing a website. By the way, guys, if you're looking to learn how to grow your website, I recommend that you check out my brother's channel because he's an SEO expert and he has a lot of great beginner tips. And again, if you wanna try out Webflow, then make sure that you use the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.